something really dumb and you had to go in front of a judge, you just prayed, you know. God, if you let me out of this, never do it again. You know, how many can relate to that? So, uh, but I'm definitely honored to, to get to speak to you guys and definitely, uh, we've definitely heard some really good words. Uh, I'm just uh, pretty excited, man. These guys are great to hang out with us. Pretty, pretty crazy. It's humbling, you know, to think that uh, basically I get paid to hang out with people that's going to influence my life and change my life on a daily basis for the good and the greater good of God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, just want to <clears throat> say, definitely, uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, my first scripture is the John 14, 12. It says, Most assuredly I say to you, he believes in me. The works that I do, will, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. <clears throat> I love that scripture, but I so get it wrong, because I want to put a word on the end of it and say immediately. Immediately. I'm, I'm very impatient, and when and when things like uh, when things don't go my way, or, or when I pray and and, uh, and it doesn't happen right away, I get very upset. But what I don't realize is, is <clears throat> through a relationship with the Lord is where you get your power. And if He was to answer our prayers every time that we ask Him for, we could just put Him on a shelf and use Him as a pool. Whenever we need it. Whenever. Oh, well, I need you now, God. You know? I, I need you now, God. That's how we do it. We just use him as a tool. So he wants us to make him the only option that we have. The only option that we have. I don't really remember who said this, uh, but it says too many options will make us a tyrant of us all. If you decrease your options, you will automatically put what's most important first. That's why it's so important to get rid of plan B. You want me to tell you why it's so important to get rid of plan B? Because when you've got all these different plans, when it gets tough, and it's going to, then ministry's hard. When, when you follow in ministry and you're following the Lord, it's hard. So it's going to get tough. You're going to, you're going to disagree with the people that's ahead of you. You're, you're going to think you know better. Because, Lord God, I spent 31 years of my life knowing better than everybody that was around me. You know? But when you do that, and you've got all these plan B's, when times get hard, guess what you're going to do? Take the easy road. You're going to take the path that you've always known, no matter what it is, and no matter how far it takes you away from the Lord. Every time. Psalm 75 and 6. says, for exhaustion, exhaustion comes neither from the east or nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. Every one of us in here is trying to be promoted some way, somehow, or somehow. Every one of us. I truly believe that that's how God wants us to be. Or made us to be, to always want to do better, to always go a step higher or a step further. I truly believe that with all my heart. But the problem is, is we always go and search by uh, trying to get a promotion from man instead of the Lord. Yeah. Every time I, I remember, I remember even when I come into the program, even when I come into the program, you know, I, I sucked up to the leaders, you know, or whatever, you know. Because I wanted promotion. I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to be higher than, than a student. I wanted to be a dorm leader at three months. I wanted to be an intern at six. And you just go ahead and graduate. I'm doing pretty good at nine. You know? I mean, but, and I always look forward to man. But man will fail you every time. Every time man will fail you, man. But, but we have to, we 
have to understand that every failure that we go through, and, and every failure that we go through, we have to look at the wisdom that we gained and continue to move forward. Every failure is a stepping block or a stepping stone to go higher or to know what not to do next time. I love the book of Daniel, and we don't have time to, to go through what I've gone through, but I love the book of Daniel, man. It's, it's so amazing how how um, how you got the Daniel and them three Jewish boys. You know, they, they were boys. They were boys when uh, King Nebuchadnezzar come in and, and, and took over. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar, I can just imagine, he probably makes Hitler look like Santa Claus, to be real. He probably makes Hitler look like Santa Claus. And, and what them boys saw, and they never lost faith. They never lost faith. They had a call on their life that they never they didn't even know they had. They didn't even know they had. And, and, and they started being obedient through the fact that uh, they wouldn't even eat the king's food. Just through, through that small, they wouldn't dishonor the Lord in that. But what I, I say all that because... I want to say through, this, through our situations that we go through, because when we get stuck into a program and we come out of a jail cell, we feel like God can't use me. I'm not going to get promoted anywhere out of this situation. And look, Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the worst conditions possible, and the Lord promoted them. Promoted them, man. Promoted them. So no matter what situation you're in or what you think you're in, it, it, God can use it, man. God can use it and promote you. <clears throat> Isaiah 58, 11. Pastor Adam used my, used my scripture. And I told him, and then, and then uh, I told him, I said, I didn't it anyway. So, <laughs> But the, the cool thing about Scripture is you can get so many different revelations out of the same Scripture. Amen. Over and over and over. I got stuck. I, listen, I went to rehab back in 2008, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a secular rehab, but uh, it did have a uh, touch of God in it. Uh, you know, definitely not like a life changers or a team challenge, but... You know, I, I I started highlighting stuff in my Bible, you know, that I had. <clears throat> and um, now I still got that same Bible. And I look through it and I, I read some scriptures that I highlighted, and it makes no sense to me. I'm like, why in the world would I even highlight that? It doesn't make no business. I, have, I don't even get no revelation out of it right now. I don't even understand why I would highlight it. But back then it meant something to me, man. So. Isaiah 58, 11 says, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. I love that. And, and, and I love the fact that if you know, you know how it says we, we should be rooted in Christ? All right, so listen, think of the root system on a tree. They, it goes down into the ground and searches for, 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 for water, for supplies to support the tree. Boy, if he's the living waters, and you're rooted in Christ, you can never fail. You cannot fail. You may trip, you may stumble, but you won't fail. You can't. If you're rooted in Christ, you cannot fail. Passion, ambition, and drive. I truly feel like that those three things is what God will instill in you if you have an intimate relationship with Him. And this is why. There's no way to have an intimate relationship with the Lord and not want to go higher. There's no way to not have a relationship with the Lord and not want the person beside you to do them better than you. There's no way. It gives, it gives you a passion to burn in inside of you to, to, to want to do better and do work for Him and see people saved, see people set free. That's what I mean. I get excited. I get excited. 
One more problem. One of our problems is, is we feel like everybody else is the problem. We feel like everybody else is the problem. And if you feel like everybody else is the problem, then you have to change them and not you. 90% of us in here want our husband to change, our wife to change, our kids to change. So I'll tell you right now, I try to change my son because he's a, a hellion sometimes. And my two-year-old, son, I swear I've cast three demons out of him, but he's got about six more to go. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because when I 
feel weak, I feel vulnerable. And, and really what it, what it relates to is, is I, I just don't trust in the Lord. I just, I just don't trust in the Lord enough to, to carry me through, so I try to do things on my own. And I try to make things happen in, in my time and in, in the way that I need them to happen. How many people try to, try to do things their way? Every time you turn out? Hmm. You know, how many times does it work? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's one time that worked. Just by the grace of God. He's sitting there shaking his head, Lord, son, not again. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> when, when anger and love are combined, it bursts passion. I was so angry at who I was and who I'd become and so disgusted with it. And then I met and had an encounter and a love for the Lord, which birthed the passion that fuels me today. I truly, I truly have found my identity, which is very hard to do some, for some people. Um, I, I struggled with it for a long time, but I continue to read, and continue to read, and continue to read, and I continue to listen and listen and listen until I really found out who I was. Until I really found out who I was and who He called me, me to be. And I, and, and I truly was okay with everything that I've done in my past because now I can try to bring somebody out of it. As long as everything that I went through in my past wasn't in vain, I'm okay. If I can show somebody else how to get out, because I mean, three years ago, one word, just another face, another loser on the mud You know? Listen. When it comes to sobriety, or it comes to going higher in the Lord, or when it comes to stepping out, <clears throat> or doing anything out of your comfort zone, Passion does not fuel you. Fear does. Fear does. It keeps you bound in contentment. It keeps you bound in your seat. It keeps you bound to that old job. It keeps you bound. <clears throat> it just keeps you bound. Fear will keep you bound. Listen, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, uh, fear will keep you bound like. I got really, really nervous to preach uh, when I had, when Pastor Adam gave me a, a spice. You know, you preach Tuesday. Well, I've got you know, you got Pastor Adam, Josh, Ryan, Pastor Ryan, Pastor Gary, what Pastor Simo. You got all these pastors that have been doing this a lot longer than me and carrying an anointing, and it put fear in me. Come on, yeah. it put fear in me. You know, it put fear. In me. How are you going to how are you going to relate and add up to them? But you know what? I, I don't have to. We, we all preach different. We all deliver a word different. Not everybody receives the same way. You know? And, and I heard Lord, the Lord clearly. I heard the Lord clearly. He said, does passion drive you or does fear? Does passion drive you or does fear drive you? Are you going to step out and trust me to deliver what needs to be delivered, Come or are you going to stand in fear? Come on. Come I ain't standing in fear, so I want to go higher. Yeah. I want more. I want more. I've done so many years without nothing that I want more. Yeah. I'm not going to settle. I, I remember Pastor Adam, and one of the first things I remember him saying, uh, preaching, was he said, if, you, if uh, you settle for less, you'll always want more. 
get me wrong, you have to be content with where God has you, but don't ever be satisfied. Don't ever be satisfied. You know, because He's always got more for you. you. I truly, truly believe that God blesses me so I can bless other people. And the more blessings and the more obedience I walk through, then that means the more people I can bless <coughs> and, and live higher. The more people I can reach back and pull up. Reach back and pull up. Because that's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. Pull people out of hell, man. Pull people out of the pits that we came from. Whether you've been in addiction or you've been serving the Lord for your whole life, that's your job is to pull people with you. Contentment and procrastination is uh, just fear. Contentment and procrastination is just fear. Why? It's, it's, it, a fear of success is um, just a fear of responsibility. successful is because it comes with responsibilities. Running this ministry comes with responsibilities. Being an executive director comes with responsibilities. Being with a mechanic comes with responsibilities. But not as much as an executive director. Not as much as a regional director. So I'll be content working on cars. But, but I'm not. But I'm not. Because I truly believe that if God pulled me from that jail cell, that jail cell, and put me in this place to serve him, that the higher I go, the more responsibilities I get, the more wisdom will come from heaven, and I'll be able to, to guide these guys where they need to be through a prayer and an intimate relationship with them. <coughs> through prayer and a relationship with If you want success, you have to work for it. If you want success, you have to work for it. I want a house. My wife wants a house. And I truly, I truly believe we probably could have went and got one somehow, some way, because there's lenders out there willing to give anybody money for a, for a set interest rate that you'll never pay for. You know, but why settle for less when I can work on my credit, work on building me up, work at getting a, a stable foundation under me, and then go do it when the time's right. And go do it when the time's right. And be happy with what I got instead of settling for less. You know? Your actions will dictate your results. Your actions will dictate your results. You'll get what you put in anything. You'll get what you put in to anything. Or you'll get what you don't put in to anything. Proverbs 10 and 4 says, Lazy hands make for poverty. But diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands bring wealth. Basically, you get what you work for. You get what you work for. <clears throat> the person that you will be depends on the people you hang out with. The person that you will be depends on the people that you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with a, by, with a brick mason, guess what? You're probably not going to do electricity work. You know? Probably not going to do electricity work. The people you in, that influence you, good or bad, will dictate your future. They will dictate your future. people that have the same ambitions and goals that you have. That's 
so I surround myself with these pastors that want to push me higher, want to push me further. Yeah. I remember, I remember when I first come into the program, and uh, Pastor Adam uh, took a couple of us guys over to his house, and he's like, "You guys can have this." You know, I just want to say, he took someone to play cards and stuff. He's like, that, you know, all this, God is no greater person. You know, he'll, he'll, what he gives to me, he'll give to you. And my mindset was, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You know, I'm a strung out junkie, but three months over, I'm not going to have nothing. Three years later, yeah, I made rent, but I got a house. I got two or three vehicles. I mean, I got a little boy that's, Need some prayer, but, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, yeah. I got a beautiful wife that loves me unconditionally because nobody else can put up with me, I promise. <laughs> you know, those things, those promises that, that, that was told to me earlier have came true. But you know what? It was a process. They didn't just come true because I was three months sober. I had to work for them. I had to work for them. You don't get nothing by just sitting there. Come on. You have to continue to push when you don't want to push. You have to give me the plan B so you don't leave. Like I see a hundred people do every time they turn around. When they get offended or get, get mad because they got knocked down for doing something stupid. Come on. Because they don't understand that God corrects the ones He loves. Amen. Come on, preach it. And it's hard. I understand that. I understand that. This thing ain't easy. Sobriety ain't easy. I ain't going to say I got it all together. I'm not going to say that. But I will say I don't struggle with the same issues I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a drinker. I went to the pill dealer. No, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense, man. I don't, I don't, I don't struggle with those, with that type anymore. You know, I, I see people on fundraisers. They're like, I've been sober four years. So a guy told me the other day, see, I've been struggling. I've been sober four years. I just want to tell you, it don't get no easier. What don't get easier? Sobriety. So you're telling me you're four years sober and struggling with wanting to get high and you're getting two months into it? Boy, you don't know the same God I know. Come on, come on. You ain't doing the same thing I do. I don't struggle with wanting to get high. Yeah. I don't struggle with wanting to get drunk. Come on. That's, that, was, that was gone to six months into the program. Come on, come on. Come on. Amen. Come on, brother. Preach it. The opportunities in your life will be the byproduct of the adversity that you go through. I'd have never been here standing in front of you guys today telling you about Jesus if I wouldn't have been strung out in that jail cell. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because I'd have never needed to rely on you. I'd have never needed you. Never. My mom and dad, I love them to death. My brother, they're very successful. They believe, they, they, they believe in the Lord. They, I guess, I don't know, I think my mom and dad were saved when they were younger. That's probably about the gist of it. Probably that. You know what I'm saying? But see, if I'd have followed them, I'd have never knew him. I could know him now. Because I never needed him. I'd have never needed him. I need him all the time now. I need him all the time now. I get, I get confused about things. I get confused about things and what I should do, and he just got me. I step back, I take a breath, and let me tell you something. You know what I tell you what I used to do? I used to be like, Pastor Adam, I just want to go, oh, Pastor Adam, you know? But you know what? I've done that until I, could, I figured out how to do it with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've done it until I figured out how to do it by myself. Yeah. Come on, yeah. So if you got to hold somebody's shirt tail, yeah. if you got to hold the spiritual father's shirt tail, hold it. If you gotta walk like a life and a life to do it, you just do it. You do it. You just keep on walking, man. Until you figure it out for yourself. Come on. Preach it, brother. Come on. We keep 
praying for opportunities, but don't want to go through the struggle it takes to heal. Good work. I yeah. definitely, I definitely want to go higher. I definitely want to, I definitely want to uh, transition into to, to the fullness of what God has for me. But you know what? I hate getting up early. Huh? I hate getting up early. Woo. So, so at night time, at night time, I lay in the bed when everybody's fell asleep, and then that's when I do my prayer and my and my study. But you know what? There's something about getting up early Come on. and seeking Him. Your day is always better. I have never yeah. got up and seeked Him in the morning that my prayer from the night before would carry me through. Yeah, that's ain't happening. I got so convicted about Pastor Josh preaching last night, I told my wife, I said, if I ain't up at 530, you can squirt me with water. <laughs> <laughs> because I used to get up at that time. I used to pray like that. And I'll go through that seasons. Those seasons I've been really good and I'm on fire. And then I start slacking. Start slacking. I wish I could stand up here and say, oh, I'm perfect. I pray every night. Every decision I need to make, I ask the Lord to tell me how to do that. But that's not, that's not how it is. That's not how it is. I struggle. But I don't struggle with the same stuff I struggled two years with. Yes. You know? Just keep pushing, man. It's a process. It's a process. Change comes in your life when you renew your mind. You renew your mind by reading God's Word. Once you start reading His Word, you start thinking different. Once you start speaking different, and you start acting different. I see people come in all the time that's brand new off the streets and don't even know the Lord or has no idea about Him. I say, you stay around here long enough and you will be. You stay around here long enough and you'll know Him. And usually when they do, they're a headache until they do get an encounter. You know, definitely Ted. You know, they're, they're a headache until they do get an encounter. But once they get an encounter, it changes their life. Because, listen, I, I, I truly believe that that's a, it's the best book in the world. And I truly believe you can read it and read it and read it and read it. But until you have an actual encounter with the Lord, it all of it's useless. Until you have an encounter with Him, and then you start realizing what those words really mean. And then you start walking them out. Come on. Start walking them out. We'll close with this. Colossians 3. It's just whatever you do, do with all your heart. It's working for the Lord, not for human masters. When you get to a place to where you know that the Lord doesn't owe you anything, your boss doesn't owe you anything, your husband or wife don't owe you anything, the man down the street don't owe you anything, and you truly realize your calling and why you get up and you do what you do, it's so much simpler. Life is so much easier. You'll have this joy and this peace about it. Yes. It's unshakable. Yeah, you'll get a, you'll get uh, frustrated. I still get frustrated and angry, but it don't last very long. It don't last very long because I carry the joy. You know, I carry the joy. So I'm just gonna pray over you, and I guess uh, I guess we'll take a. Alright, so Father God, I just thank you. Lord God, I praise you for who you are. Father, I, I pray that, the, that the, the, the word that come from you, Father God, will just lay on the tablets of their heart. Father, I pray that maybe just one thing will change somebody's life in here today that I said. Father, I, I pray that they hold on to it tight and continue to push forward into you for you to be the glory. Father, I thank you.